Welcome. This is a March 5th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Nick Z, Jan B, Toasterson, Daniel B, Doug R, and myself, Michael. And Doug has some OCI updates, including Container Plumbing Days. What can you tell us about that event? Okay. So Container Plumbing Days is a regular um, one-day conference. I believe it's always one day. I'm not, I've never been to it. Um, its subject matter is the lower level parts of of Linux container management system. So it's Docker, uh, Container D, uh, Podman, all of those other pieces that sit below the, the kind of clustering type uh, things like Kubernetes. Um, so this one is in Seattle. Um, okay. In, we get the dates. Oh. Did Greg with the foundation mention this one? Yeah. So um, nah, Greg and uh, Ed Mast will be there. I'll be there. I'm going to do a, give a lightning talk on contain, FreeBSD containers with Podman. Um, it's the date is April 15th, 2024. It's the Seattle Com Convention Center, and it's co-located with another open source um, conference called Open Source Summit, which is a three-day. Container Plumbing Days is separate from that, and um, a attending would cost you $99 unless you're a speaker. So pretty good value, I reckon, especially if you're on the West Coast. Indeed. Uh, at least two of us are south of there. Well, cool. Uh, thank you for that reminder. Um, with profound irony, I just scheduled a doctor's appointment for that day <laughs> this morning, <laughs> but that can probably move. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, mm -hmm. Any other OCI news? Yeah, so we've got a regular uh, bi-weekly meeting to discuss the um, OCI FreeBSD extension, which we'd, we aim to define this year. Um, first of those is on the 21st of March. Um, currently, it's it, it, the invitee list is just the, the original organizers, but I believe we should... I mean, I'm going to defer to Greg Wallace because he's managing the meeting, but I, I believe it should be open to, to um, interested participants as well as the, the people that are organizing the working group. Sounds good. So anybody, anybody that's interested in that regular meeting should contact uh, Greg Wallace. That's greg at freebsdfoundation.org. He owns the meeting and um, probably has a, um, a clearer idea of the, the um, content that he wants to see in the kind of participants. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I have a topic, but I'd like to hear from everyone else. And Jan, you are kindly sharing your wisdom in the chat. You're welcome to blast that straight in the dock because I will be copying and pasting. Ha. Huh. Um, let's see. Toasterson, you are on Illumos, as I recall. Is there any news in Illumos zone land? Uh, not that much at the moment. Uh, a lot of the stuff is basically bundled up in, hey, you're a competitor to VMware, right? Oh, interesting. Well, it's timely. <laughs> Have you well, seen... Well, that's basically all the chats that are going on. So everything is VM-based now. I see. Good, good, good. Um, have you seen Antrenig's uh, Illumos news page? Yes. Uh, I was actually helping him set that up. Awesome. Uh, for those who celebrate, Antonik has an Illumos page, and he's hoping to update that shortly for a new a new batch of news. Let's see. Well, let's dive right in. Uh, I will take the blame for this one. Uh, I do need some jails like yesterday, and in theory, package base is here. So, Jan, Just in theory. Well, 
in, in, until I see it and I'm able to poke at it and see it working, it's a theory to me. <laughs> so package, reek, boat, conf. Da, 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 okay. Da. Um, so potentially you want to uh, have a different version in your, of the user land in your jail than on the host. Uh, but you don't want to have to call the repositories different things. So it can make sense. Instead of having one repository uh, name per version, you have the FreeBSD base uh, repository name. Mm -hmm. But then you would have be limited to only one uh, repository of that name. So you can tell the package to command where to look up for uh, the repository of as a repository configuration. So yeah, doing that is a way to have a different version uh, of your jails. If you want to run 13.2, even if there are no official uh, packages for 13.2, you can have them uh, compiled yourself. And then you can run 13.2 package base on 14, for example. Okay. Fortunately, I do not have that need. I just want a nice element In that separation. case, you can get rid of the uh, repository uh, conf deer. Uh, so the thing is, um, there are several ways to use the package command. Basically, there are four. The normal one is don't tell it anything but what you want to do. The other ones are to attach to an existing jail before then invoking the command inside the jail or uh, entering a change root environment mm -hmm. before um, performing the command. But you can't do those uh, different levels of isolation in an, to an empty directory because there won't be anything in there. There won't be a resolver comp, there won't be a, a repository definition and so on. Um, and there won't be a package command as <laughs> to even run the subcommands in. Yep. So, um, because of that, you can instead tell it to run under a prefix, basically, and that's what the root uh -huh. setting does. It does not provide secure isolation, not even of the file system namespace. It's just basically like when you, you invoke uh, install uh, kernel, install world, install distrib uh, sorry, a distribution with a desk argument um, so that you can populate a point in your file system. Um, the downside of that requirement is that uh, because packages can contain hooks, which trigger, for example, if you install and there's a someone placed a malicious package there, which just happens to conflict with everything you want to do, so it gets auto removed and then the uninstall hook runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that runs with uh, host system privileges. So don't point the package command without dash j at jails if you want the jail to be a security boundary. And you have clever attackers, which you have to assume. Um, so um, that's what about it. repo would one actually point? It does a standard FreeBSD repo include the base components yet? Um, you have to configure it. The config file isn't shipped by default. OK. Is one turn to the um, wiki for that, the, like package base wiki? Yeah, exactly. The package okay. base side and the wiki tells you everything you need to know. Oh, okay. Um, uh, let me look it up. What they put I've in there. I've got it. Yeah, let's, I think this should do the trick. The initial setup stage. Um, so the reason why it couldn't be included in 14.0 is uh, that the process was a bit delayed, so the official mirrors weren't in place. And then that was held back by a little bug in room package, which caused potential problems. And so uh, there was first had to be a version 20, uh, 1.20.9 uh, to fix that problem, which, yeah, it's not even a big problem, but they decided to handle it like that. Fair enough. And so you have to put that into your ETC package or like the, shown there on the wiki page, you put it in user local ETC uh, package repos, and then you have the repository definition. Okay. 
Uh, what's nice about package base is that um, each uh, errata or bug fix becomes its own a patch level, which is then a repository. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and forth, uh, unlike FreeBSD update, where you can no longer update to the previous patch level if the new one comes out. So nice. you can only go forward, which yeah, it's a good idea for security, but not for um, getting clean reproducible deployments where you have to reproduce a bug. Maybe you want to confirm that the bug actually existed in the old version, that the errata fixed it, and want to go back and forth and reproduce the error and make sure that it solved the problem and Agreed that you could completely. reproduce it on the old version. With uh, FreeBSD update, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, so that you had to compile locally and then install, which puts a heavy burden on the compiling machine and um, may not be perfectly reproducible, especially compared to the official builds on a clean system, because one make may depend on your make.conf or other changes to the host where you are compiling it, unless you run your own Pudia builder. And then you can just install it, uh, pull it in. It installs quickly, especially if you have the packages cached. Um, the, for when you use it to create a jail, everything works perfectly fine. When you want to convert an existing FreeBSD installation to package base, then you have to watch out because during installation, uh, you will have conflicts in slash etc. For example, your user and password database mm -hmm. are probably not the um, no password configured. You can unlock in default. So what happens there is that it would um, be a perfect foot gun to install it on top of your installed system, undo all your users, and then reboot if you can't log in again. Is there an official path for that migration or um, not so much? Do you know? The, so there are, if you read a bit further down, there are solutions, but uh, the best one I have found is to um, use a boot environment, chain mm -hmm. it, then uh, do the changes inside the boot environment uh, while it's jailed, do the full conversion. Heck, you could adjust uh, copy slash etc from your host system on top of what basically delete slash etc or just delete all the dot package save files and copy it over. And if you want to see what's going on, I can recommend to just put your slash etc under git version uh, management uh, before then you basically delete all the package save files and you run git diff to find out what changed. Mm -hmm. You can probably just use git restore to restore everything. And then if you're happy with it, you can just delete the .git directory. Interesting. And you, you don't have anything. And then you can just uh, pick the, use uh, the boot environment control command to uh, okay. pick the converted user land as boot environment and reboot into it. Mm -hmm. And if I it like doesn't that. work, you can pick the other one. Yeah. Um, not that it should cause any problems. And of course, a ZFS rollback is needed. But anyway, <laughs> no, but It's a lot nicer when you have uh, boot environments to pick. Yes, amen. From, uh, especially when you have access to the system console because then you have a very reliable safety net. Dave, and we were talking about package have to uh, do uh, open heart surgery on your running system because you can create a new boot environment, mount it writable as a um, as a jail, and then do the conversion inside the jail, mm -hmm. which makes it a very low risk, just a bit annoying step. Cool. Uh, if you're fairly feeling uh, uh, adventurous, you can do all of these steps to your running system and hope that nothing complains that for a few seconds you won't have a valid uh, group and user database. 
for a lab system or so that's perfectly acceptable, but you should really shouldn't be doing that. Right. The proper way to avoid this from becoming a problem is to have someone put package base uh, support into BSD install so that you can don't ever have to uh, migrate a fresh system directly after installation because you can directly install using the equivalent to the command you would use to create your jail. You would just use it to populate the user land instead of unpacking the tarballs. Uh, on that note, all of my recent installations have been VM images put onto bootable drives. And I love the notion of having a a boot environment that is package based and one just simply selects that when the time comes. So I like it. You can take the official VM image, uh, convert it to package base, um, and that, then um, interesting. dump that again. But you kind of have to watch out so that you probably best to, yeah, what, what could you do? You could enter it uh, via single user mode. Yep. So that nothing gets executed, take a snapshot so that you have the exact state. And then you let it run so that you can find out if what had changed during change boot, uh, first boot, so that it's not tainted by having generated SSH, private keys, and so on. Indeed. But um, it's a bit of tinkering uh, left to the user as an exercise, of course. as I say. Well... <laughs> But the tinkering options are stunningly cool at the moment. Uh, let's see. Anything else related to package base in and of itself? You've given some great ideas uh, here that yes, I look forward to um, testing. You, yes. When you use it, you have to remember that now uh, a package update uh, after a bug fix comes out may tell you that there are 400 new uh, change packages and you just have to, maybe if you want to do the base system first, you specify a repository, for example, uh, package upgrade dash R freebsd dash base, or uh, the other way around. Uh, if you want to do the uh, ports first, then you do package upgrade dash R uh, freebsd without dash base, hmm. so that you specify uh, which repository uh, to use. And none of the usual Pains of multi repository operation apply because the sets of packages are disjunct. So you don't have to ever uh, worry about a base package being also compiled from the ports and then because they're all under the FreeBSD dash uh, prefix. What flags determine which one? Uh, dash R for repository, lowercase. Okay, and then you'd say just with a base? Uh, FreeBSD or... for the default FreeBSD packages or FreeBSD uh, dash base if you follow the uh, recommendations from the wiki article. Got it, thank you. Because there isn't a release where you can just get it out of as an example file there's only a convention, so there is nothing to ha have to follow. But oh. I would assume that the name from the wiki article will make it into the next release. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. And hopefully someone can update the wiki to not be release candidates. Maybe it's a bad example. Anyway. Yeah. Easy to use. Uh, I've used it to upgrade from uh, 13 to uh, 14 uh, on systems. It handles that just fine. Oh. You just have to uh, specify during the upgrade that you really want to do it because normally a package will tell you that, well, I could install those packages, but they have a higher uh, ABI version than the one of your kernel, uh, so I won't do it. And you have to specify, yes or no, please override the ABI environment verbal. I really want to upgrade my system. Yeah. Are there and pointed at a hmm? are there weekly snapshot builds for package uh, so you can track current we, with it? Because uh, Lord knows I didn't, FreeBSD updates uh, not the way to do it. Tried, but uh, let's have a look what the package members contain. Okay. There are there are weekly um 
if if you if you set the tail end of the URL to uh, base underscore latest, I think, then you get the weekly snapshots. Awesome. Oh, that would be if you can track current with that, that would be fantastic. Solving so it, countless issues it, at once. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want if you want um, the latest uh, patch level, then it's I believe it's base underscore release underscore zero one two. That's the one given in the uh, wiki article. Yeah. Um, so for if thirteen, oh. the, as an example, if if thirteen point three was was supported by the system, then it would mm -hmm. be release underscore three, um, with ABI thirteen. If you look in the wiki article under yep. status, you get the URL schema. Oh. It's editing yeah. and hold the on. build frequency. Uh, yeah, I don't, but hold on. I wants to edit that. I don't want to edit that. Um, state it. Oh, okay. Uh, so you have the latest, which is compiled twice a day. Beautiful. You have the weekly one, uh, with one which follows the uh, uh, scale, and then one which follows release engineering. Ah. <sighs> Which is what FreeBSD update would get you if you're on a release branch. Oh, oh, that is something to work with. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If there's nothing else there, Dave, I'd love to know if you have any CI news. I know you wanted to put Jen Jenkins in its place. Uh, no, works. We're sort of trucking along on this. We're doing um, UI stuff at the moment, so you can sort of see it doing the plumbing. But yeah. News will come when when there's more news. Okay, cool. At least I'm not the only one putting a Jenkins in its place. <laughs> how yeah, are you doing? Under? <laughs> I keep thinking of how long I've wanted to do this, and it's a little bit embarrassing. How long? It's like uh, it's it's more than ten years now. <laughs> are you moving from or to Jenkins? Actually, um, neither. I'm just it's been so long. So most of my stuff is in packages now. So. Um, ah. I, I kind of have sort of local, local build, make file produces a package. Um, and this is more, I just want to solve the general case properly, uh, properly for once. Yeah. And Toasterson, do you have a Jenkins strategy to either embrace it or avoid it? Uh, probably more avoid it. Okay. That's uh, fair game. Since, well, uh, somebody has to write the script. Um, well, I either write it in a shell script or I actually do something a little bit more sophisticated, which is what I'm trying to plan or in the process of doing. Okay. Uh, do reach out to Dave. He's been putting a mere decade of thought into this challenge, I suppose. Well, it's for us, it's not just CI, yeah. it's also package and package metadata. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is the main focus. So for us, it's basically we have the main things already tried and tested and working. It's just like have a nice hour-like interface where people can actually look for which package is which component. Ah. Because it's like, oh, I want to update package X. Oh my god, where in the repo was it again? Maybe call it dependencies. Cool. Well, Godspeed on that. Dave, any other topics? <clears throat> and my other jail question of the day is, are there any special dependencies such as virtual file systems needed for Samba within a jail, or should it just work um, out of the box? You... I think uh, for some features, you have to mount the file descriptor file system, FDSFS. Okay. Maybe that, that was previous, only though. during the development of the 4.19 uh, board. I remember that being mentioned that for some functionality, you could do it uh, uh, differently, but the way it's implemented, it relies on slash def slash fd number to be available. Okay. Instead of cool. being smart enough to know that this is could be done via dup or yeah. 
So I have put an inordinate amount of time into, uh, okay. let's see, Samba 416, 419. And fortunately, 419 has been fixed recently, This actually this week, for a dependency that was breaking it on ZFS as a domain controller. So I'm hoping to explore and update what all those limitations and abilities are, because most documentation is either fragmented or absent and frustrating. I just care that it works as a file server. I don't care about domain controllers. Um, if you want to spend a thousand bucks on a domain controller or roll your own other options, go for it. But anyway, it's just I don't want to run Windows. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> There's, there's. You can get one in a web UI. <laughs> oh, I'm being quiet. <laughs> Daniel, any questions, observations, war stories related to that? I know you've used a, a samba or two in anger, and you're muted. But yeah, know. sorry, I, I'm okay. trying to figure out how to get my phone to unmute. Um, yeah, yeah, I do have, I do have Samba deployed as domain controllers in, in a couple, in jails, but not on, so yeah, the one that I, yeah, so I'm, anyway, what I was, what I was, uh, I was messaging you privately about before is I think I have some test environments that I can, I can try to create some domain controllers for you and you know, I mean, what happens if you make a domain controller and it doesn't work? I'd have to delete it, and it's a pain to delete them. But you know, it's just a couple of LDAP entries, so I'm happy to do some real-world uh, tests and see if I can help you figure out what's what's going on with different forest levels and stuff. Well, I do have several hardware machines running various things, and I've realized, hey, if you virtualize it, you have ZFS at your disposal and you can roll back in a heartbeat. So after all that promotion and stuff, you can bring it right back and choose a different level. And it's been fascinating. So yeah, I'll, I'll perhaps show you what I've done so far and then see if you have ideas. But do you recall the file descriptor FS being required in 2024? Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I forget what breaks. But I, get, I think that I've never, I've never put a lot of thought into not doing it because I think it comes up on the package install. So I've just reflexively done that. Got it. And it's just generally a good idea to have that file system available because a bunch of stuff relies on slash dev fd. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, Java? It's um, uh, yeah. a bunch so of shells you'll Jenkins. find around. That gets uh, it's back to our Jenkins problem. Exactly. Words <laughs> we never want to hear yeah. again. <laughs> Technologies. But, uh, the reason is that embedding the file descriptors is just a nice way, for example, if a command takes a path to write to, but doesn't have a special or, or to read from, it doesn't have special handling to uh, except any name like a single dash as standard in or out, you can just give it slash def fd one or zero and it works. The first three file descriptors are always available because the normal def fs already does that for standard in, out and error because a bunch of stuff uses it. But if you want more than the first three file descriptors, uh, then you have to uh, mount this file system. The other example would be the uh, fxecve uh, system call only works with interpreters uh, if you uh, have the file system mounted because it makes it uses slash def fd to uh, tell the interpreter from where to interpret. So it has to be able to basically build a shebang line and then do the thing because the interpreter won't have doesn't have any other argument to take but a path. So it, the file descriptor has to become a path. And most of the time you don't want to use any of the lower free file descriptors as your source. 
because all of them may be needed within your code. And you can't just cheat and use standard in, for example, in a shell script, if you ever want to read input, yeah, there's a good reason why you want to use a higher file descriptor and just have the file system mounted. Tellstrison, tell us about Carnidium. Yeah, it's something I wanted to try for quite some time because it's a it's basically SUSE's new I'm gonna make a domain controller from scratch hmm. Interesting. implementation. Um, which has like LDAP, read, and all sorts of fancy stuff, including PAM integration. So it works as PAM and NSS switch modules, which thanks to Rust you can make now again. People are actually trusting their code again to do that. Huh. Um, and I heard about it with Windows integration sometime, but I think it fell off of the radar. Can't if I read through the book, I can't see it at the moment. So that would seem like the rice on Detra, but I could be wrong. Happy to be wrong. Docker pull. Oh yeah, yeah, you lost me right there, but <laughs> it's a Rust binary. You can cargo install it. Okay. Docker, 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 Docker. Okay. Interesting. Well, cool. Um, do share what you find. That is fascinating. Kubernetes ingress. Free mm. IPA. REST interface. So interesting. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. The interesting thing is that it is basically a open IDC controller by default. Mm hmm. So you can basically use it as replacement for Keycloak. Um, and you can do web often, so web authentication with like pass keys and stuff like that. My or at least right? one version. Web uh, as a as interface. Okay, well, there's all kinds of things going on there. That's kind of cool. Face. Anything else? No, that's it. Well, everyone speak now or forever hold your peace. Um, I have nothing against a short meeting ever. So I'm just the whole start. concept of online validation against LDAP and Kerberos is just broken by design if you want deterministic answer times and reliability <laughs> just keep a local replica of your user <clears throat> in group database watch it for staleness uh, and use it yeah that's basically in, what i think too it often does. by tail latencies of LDAP or cover services or uh, just partition networks uh, yeah, the LDAP service is running. You just can't reach it because mm -hmm. your one server at what that one point of presence over there doesn't have its own. And by the point where you have a read-only um, Delta Sync REPL open LDAP server on each server mm -hmm. locally to to uh, use the uh, NSS Palm uh, LDAP the uh, Unix server protocol as an overlay in open LDAP, you've gone down the deep end of trying to make a pick fly by strapping it to an ICBM or something. Okay. <laughs> it's yes, just yes. total overkill. Um, yeah, so the, you can run a local open LDAP, and then now you have to monitor that. It's so much easier to monitor but for the Staleness of two files and for the healthiness of an LDAP replica. Hmm. And so suddenly, do you on a Unix system truly need the full LDAP feature set? I'm not saying that LDAP is not a suitable source of truth, but it isn't what you should be validating against during locking. 
Hmm. So something like NSS cache is a, a lot better idea, even if the real project is broken by Linux isms because they insist on compiling a shadow map, which is separate from the password map. So hmm. you can't directly use it on FreeBSD. But the idea is correct. Uh, I will not yet propose a dedicated authentication call, but there are definitely topics there <laughs> that I think people are not, starting with myself, super versed in with much to learn and share. Anything else at this time or see you perhaps tomorrow for ZFS and Friday, Thursday for Beehive? Uh, I need oh. Did we not have some OmniOS topics that were on the top of the list at some point? Uh, Did those get solved? There are always perennial topics. Let's take a look. There's the information. There's just the rules. Do any come to mind? No, they were up there last time. Oh, just let's trying. more accurately scroll down and see about last round. Um, what were they? Doug OCI. Yeah, I don't recall any explicitly, but I'm happy to be wrong on that. So do chime in and you have my full permission to drop topics on the dock. Just say, hey, next meeting. Like like reminder to myself that's off off screen here. <laughs> yeah. No, I just I just wanted to see if I can help solve some things, but that's okay. Uh, if it's solved, it's solved. Yeah. Antrenig considered joining, but he's probably tied up. So he's been getting his feet very wet with uh, Omni OS, which is impressive. Well, everyone, I will be around a few minutes, but so, I'm happy to call it. Yes, Jan, do you have an official uh, topic? There is no NSS yes. PUM, like uh, you said in the um, minutes. It's You have an NSS LDAP, which uh, the project of that name is just so incredibly brain dead. Um, it's a wonder someone ever got it Considered it usable. Oh, drop it in any, the chat. How bad is it? The problem with the original uh, NSS and PUM modules is that basically every application using NSS and PUM became an LDAP client. Mm. And on first lookup, would establish an LDAP uh, connection to the LDAP servers. So basically, every the worst case, the pathological case, would be something like. Uh, fine pipe x arcs uh, stat where you, uh, you would then x arcs just and one stat where you, so you would run a stat command it would look at a single file become an LDAP client because it would use dl open to pull in um, the LDAP library and thereby open SSL would then establish a TLS session with a new handshake because it can't reuse any cache credentials it would have to authenticate through a world readable private key, which is uh, at that point you should just stop if you have a world readable private key mm. uh, for authentication purposes mm. somewhere. Um, yeah. Cool. So then there's NSS uh, PUM LDAP, which splits this logic into a dedicated LDAP client daemon, which then runs under its own user, has its own credentials with the LDAP uh, service, and then the NSS and PUM modules are just very little, uh, small stuff resolvers which ask it over a Unix socket, which uh, from a design point of view, okay, that's fine. The big problem there is that it's still uh, has to query the LDAP database over the network, and neither NSS nor PUM have been designed with latency and uh, intermediate errors um, yeah, in mind. So they don't even have return codes to indicate temporary unavailability or slow answers. Interesting. OK. So they just either, so uh, basically when your LDAP query is slower than your timeout, uh, you, you can just say, yeah, the user does not exist, uh, bounce his mails. <laughs> Interesting. Or stuff like that. And it, the, the horrible uh, solution uh, to this is to run the 
NSS Caching Daemon, which is a simple um, git miss cache. So it's not a full replica of your database, which would be fine. No, it's a, a hit miss cache with simple LRU characteristics as implemented in FreeBSD and I think Linux. So uh, what then happens is that you cache both positive and negative lookups, which is really nice if you install a package and it fails mm -hmm. because the package install will check if the user exists, then, oh no, it doesn't create it. And then the NSS cache has cached that that user does not exist. And so hey. by the time it tries to uh, install the package as this user, it will tell you, no, that user does not exist because okay. uh, I cached it <laughs> and there's no, good way to do cache invalidation uh, wow, built into okay. the usual way. So it's just an unfinished mess. And you can avoid all of it by just treating your local user group database as a database. Just and how do you think it across machines in your book? Whatever works for you. Got it. Um, if you are serious about it, you have to make sure that it doesn't grow too stale so that um, credential revocation works. So if someone should be locked out, that everyone knows that they're locked out. Um, hmm. You can use push or pull. Yeah. Cool. Whatever you use to configure other important config files, like you can do it with Ansible, you can use your own thing, specialized thing which only knows how to distribute these two files, basically. Um, yep. But yeah. Cool. Other thoughts, or shall we call it? Well, thank you, everyone. I'll be around a few minutes. And like and subscribe, as others kindly point out. Take care. Yes.